So what is a key? And how does the major scale? How does it help us to define the notes in a key? How does it help us find what chords belong in a key? Major versus minor, diminished chords. How does that all fit together? We're gonna to explore all of that in this video, so be sure to watch till the end in order to get the, the full picture. So the key is a collection of notes or tones that help to describe a tonal center, right? When we say something's in the key of G, everything in that key is built around the idea of G. Everything wants to come back home. It wants to resolve to the G. In order to find the major scale, there's actually a, a formula that um, allows us to find all the notes in a scale. And that formula is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. What that means is there's a series of intervals, right? When we say whole, there's actually two half steps. So a half step is just like it sounds, it's just one fret. And a whole step is two frets. Now, when you use that formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, that's gonna line out all of the notes in your major scale. So we'll start with the, the note for the, the key that we're in we're going to be building everything off of. We're going to go a whole step. We're going to go another whole step. Half step. Whole step. Whole step. Whole step. Half step. So that's all the notes that are going to happen in the G major scale. We can play that a little bit more uh, compact here in one section of the neck by doing this. When we're thinking of the key of G major, those are the notes that lie in something called a diatonic key. Those are just notes that occur in the key. There's no fancy things that fall outside of those collection of notes. So when we're looking at questions like what chords belong in that key, you'll look at the different notes that are in that scale, and each of those notes will be the root note of a chord. So we end up with something called a chord scale, where we'll have a collection of chords like this. Um, if you're finding any value in this video so far, please like, comment, and subscribe. Now back to the chords. So every note in that scale has a chord associated with it, but they're not all the same chord. How do we find out which chord belongs where? Well, we'll look at the different intervals, the different notes that are in that scale, and we're gonna assign them a number. And we're gonna apply a rule here. We're, we're talking strictly diatonic, major scale, major key. The first, the fourth, and the fifth will always be major in this context. And the second, the third, and the sixth will always be minor. And the seventh is diminished. There will be some songs where there'll be so, uh, chords that lay outside of that or that are different from that, but that's not technically a diatonic key. This is strictly speaking about chords that fall inside of the scale, inside of this key. So how do we know that that's always true and how do those chords come together? Looking at the notes all lined out right here, we'll have the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then it starts over again at G, which is our octave. So we start on the root note, let's say G. All right, we'll have all of the notes here on screen. And if you skip, the second note, let's go to the third note, that'll be our third, so we have a G and B, right? And if we do the same thing again, we'll skip our fourth note to our fifth note, because major and minor chords are made of, of a root, a third, either a major third or a minor, and then a fifth. Um, those three notes together give us our chord, it's a triad. What makes a major chord major is its third interval. There's something called a major three. What makes a minor chord minor is its third interval, and it has something called a minor third. So the difference between a major third and a minor third has to do with the interval relationship. If it's two whole steps, like our third is on, on one, that is the interval relationship for a major third. If it's one and a half steps, so a whole step and a half step, that's a minor third interval distance. Right? The fifth is found in the same way. You would skip the, the, the next note and then the one after that will be your fifth. So we end up with this A minor here. And it just so happens that with the way this stuff lines up, you get the one, the 
four and the five as the major chords, the two, three, and six as minor. And the way that it, the seventh chord lines up, it becomes a diminished chord, which is uh, a minor third and taking a fifth interval and making it minor. Uh, so basically that fifth interval is just half step flatter than the rest of them. So that's how the chords are built using the major scale. So why is this information useful? Well, you can use it to actually figure out what key you're playing in. If you know that in a diatonic key, your four and five are always a major chord, if, you've, if you have two major chords that are only one whole step apart, chances are that's gonna tell you what key you're in. So like, let's say for example that you have a D major and an E major, right? If you know that this is gonna be your four, and this is gonna be your five because you have two major chords that live one whole step apart from each other, you'll be able to more readily understand that you're probably playing in the key of A major. Right? The same thing is true for the two and the three chords, uh, two minor chords that are one whole step apart. So if, let's say that you have a uh, G minor and an A minor. Those are two different minor chords that are just one whole step apart. That only occurs in the two and the three of a diatonic key, of, of a major scale. So chances are you're probably playing in the key of F major. If you found anything in this video useful, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It really helps me out. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.